Na na na. Reflex drop. Na na na. Home front. Na na na. Go on, say it. Tell me how much you've missed the home front gameplay. Go on, say it. <laughs> What's going on, people? Sniping again with the M110. It's Reflex drop here. <laughs> but yeah, man. I've missed home front. I know you guys have missed it too. It's just a shame that this gameplay isn't that great. <laughs> And I have to apologize because I was, I was watching over this gameplay and I was thinking to myself, man, what was I doing? What was I doing in this game? And the thing is, I've actually improved, like my sniping has improved a lot since I played this game. But I guess my excuse is that, you know, you guys, you guys need to see what I play like when I'm not playing at my best. So there's my excuse. There it is. Take it and leave it. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Here's the home front. Take it or leave it. But anyway, guys. Look at this guy! Oh my! How did he not see me? Get knifed in the neck, you silly boy! The topic today is paranormal activity. <laughs> it seems that that film scared you guys the most out of all of the other horror films that you might have watched. But anyway, paranormal activity. And that film is really impressive. Really, really impressive. It had a budget of like $15,000 and it's made nearly 200 million dollars worldwide i mean that's how you know that is how you know that is a good film and <laughs> i don't know as much as i enjoyed paranormal activity one i have a beef with it i think that there's there was something wrong with it i mean i've watched it like three maybe four times twice by myself and i watched it again so i'd have something to talk about with you guys but I just, I don't know. I don't want to ruin it for the people who may have not seen it. But basically, there's this couple, Katie and I don't know the guy's name. <laughs> My girlfriend's going to be pissed that I remember the girl's name. But anyway, Katie, oh, Mika, that's it. Katie and Mika, they're a couple, boyfriend and girlfriend. They're living in their house together. And basically, there's this demon that's just tormenting the house or something like that. <laughs> and firstly, oh my, firstly... Katie, silly woman, she appoints a psychic. <laughs> she appoints a psychic to come and inspect her house. I mean, come on, man. That's silly. I mean, guys, if a demon was overruling your house, are you really going to call a psychic? <laughs> and the worst thing about it is, is that the psychic doesn't even tell her that she's going to kill her boyfriend. I mean, you think a psychic would know something like that? <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, she appoints a psychic and the psychic basically tells her that, you know, there's a demon in the house and he doesn't, de he doesn't deal specifically with demons. So he's going to, he's going to give her the number of a demonologist. So there she is. She has, there it is. Sorry. She has the solution, but like an idiot, she doesn't consult the demonologist. I mean, that's, I just found that annoying, man. It's like you have the solution at the beginning of the film. You know the problem. You know that there's a demon running around. You've been told that, look, this is what you need to do. Call this guy. But she doesn't do it. I mean, there's nothing really preventing her from doing it as well. It's like if they made it in a way where the actual demon was was preventing her from calling the demonologist, then the, it, it would have made for better storytelling. It's like It's like a superhero. Who, who knows how to defeat his enemy, but he doesn't do it because he's just bored. He can't be bothered. I mean, come on, you know? That's just silly. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's a good film. Paranormal Activity. I enjoyed it a lot more um, the second time I watched it because I watched the alternate endings as well. And man, those, that, that last bit, man, that just, that just blew me away. I mean, in the second one, a lot more stuff happens, but I feel they kind of just longed it out. It was like, you know, it's just waiting, waiting, waiting. There it is, there it is. And it's like, you know, but I don't know. I enjoyed the first one a lot more. And I was thinking about, <laughs> I was thinking if I was in that situation, like if a demon was in my house, <laughs> what would I do? And I actually thought about it and I thought, man, I don't know, man. I mean, I wouldn't call a psychic. I mean, who would call a psychic? And he'd probably just tell you, oh, yeah, you need to call a demonologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'd call a priest. I'd call a priest or a pastor, somebody with some kind of religious aspect, religious view on the thing. Because, oh, hold on. You need to see this right here. Chuck this C4. Blow your car away. Oh, reach out and touch someone. <laughs> That's gameplay, man. That's gameplay. But anyway, yeah, so... If I was in that situation, I'd have to call a priest, man. There's no way I'm calling a psychic. I think 
the way that they dealt with that whole situation was all wrong. It was all wrong. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking, has it, have I ever experienced any paranormal activity? I don't know. I don't think so. But I think I had this dream once when I was, I don't know, a few years ago. I had this dream and it was like, it was honestly the scariest dream I've ever had. And it was like, it was, it was like a dream that's actually real. I'll just tell you it. Basically, I was um I was dreaming when I was asleep and I'd woken up in my dream and I was I was looking I was looking in front of me and there was this this black figure. It was like it was like Voldemort from the first Harry Potter. <laughs> it was like that cloak and you can't really see its face. It was like that and it was standing in front of my bed and it was holding onto my foot and as soon as it touched me, it was like sucking the life out of me, like literally sucking the life out of me. And it was holding my voice back in a way that like whatever I said wouldn't come out, like no, no sound would come out. And, you know, I, I was I was calling for my mum, <laughs> like a little boy. I was calling for my mum and no voice was coming out and it was sucking the life out of me. And it was, it, was, it was like, it was one of those things where it's happening in a dream, but it's happening in real life as well. Like, I can actually feel my life being taken away from me. And I don't know what I did. I must have said something and it just went away. But, you know, I was afraid to go to sleep after that. So I stayed awake for like an hour or something. And then I watched TV until the TV went off and then I fell asleep. And it came back. And this time it was standing, it was standing closer towards me and it was holding just below my knee. And it was doing the same thing. It was sucking the life out of me. And I was I was trying to call desperately for my mum. I was like, mum, mum, but no voice was coming out. And at the same time, it, it just felt like my life was going. Like I was just losing breath. And I don't know what I don't know what happened, but I just started calling out father. I just started shouting, Father, Father, Father. And the the whole the thing just went away. It just disappeared. And I don't know my mum must have come into the room a few moments late and she was like what's going on what's going on i've heard noises and i was like what noises what noises did you hear because you know i wasn't making any noises so <laughs> i was like what noises did you hear mum?" and she was like i just heard you i just heard you mumbling like whisp like shout whispering for breath and i was like what and i was like oh, i don't know guys it was just it's honest it was honestly the scariest dream the scariest real dream. what do you call us <laughs> <laughs> what do you call something like that? I don't know. It was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I don't know if you could call it if you can call it paranormal activity, but it's supernatural, man. It, it happened. I mean, some guys, some people might say, yeah, yeah, it's just a dream. But you know, I know the difference between a dream and reality. I know it, man. If something's physically happening to me, I know it. It's happening to me. It's not me imagining it. But I don't know, man. Nothing like that has happened to me since then. And I hope it doesn't. I pray that it doesn't, man. Because that was just... I don't think anybody deserves to go through that, man. That was really and truly terrifying. <laughs> but anyway, I want to know, guys. Have you guys ever experienced paranormal activity? Anything like that? Have you seen a ghost? Have you seen, you know, some kind of demon? you ever been possessed? I don't know, man. Just let me know because you guys know I'm a filmmaker. And... I was thinking the first film I want to make, I want to, I want it to be a horror film, but I want it to be supernatural, something that's, something that can be based on true events. <laughs> so if you guys can share any of those awesome experiences with me, I'll credit you guys when the film comes. You know, if if an idea evolves, I'll credit you guys in the film. <laughs> I hope I haven't ruined your Easter Sunday, guys, with that dramatic story. <laughs> but anyway, this gameplay is coming to an end, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed and you're not scared by my by my horrifying dream. But anyway, feel free to share all of those experiences with me in the comment section below and we'll get to debating on that. Hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. Take care guys and peace. Happy Easter.